Hello everyone, my name is Leo Ramos and I'm one of the instructors at the Yellow Barn Studio in Glen Echo, Maryland. For this video I want to talk about deliberate practice. And for those of you who have never heard of the term deliberate practice, it essentially refers to a special type of practice that is purposeful and systematic. Now, there are four components to um, participating in deliberate practice. One is having a specific goal. Uh, second one would be being intensely focused on that goal. The third one would be finding feedback. And fourthly would be finding yourself in frequent discomfort. Deliberate practice shouldn't feel good. It, it's a hard task to take on. So I'll give you a good example of one point in time in my life when I had to engage in deliberate practice. I've always been interested in portraiture and figure work. And early on, everything was new and very exciting and I was really engaged in it. But then I found myself in a situation where I had plateaued in my work. I, I felt like I wasn't growing as a painter anymore and I wasn't excited about how my portrait would come out. So I try to identify what was going wrong. And one way I went about it is I looked at other artists who also did portraiture and I try to figure out what their work had that made it appealing to me and compare my work to their work. Now, after spending some time analyzing my body of work and their body of work I came to the conclusion that the biggest difference between my work and their work is the group of artists that I was looking at that I liked had really dynamic brushwork the brush strokes were really loose and really controlled and really apparent whereas my brush strokes were almost non-existing you know, I, I had okay composition and I understood value well and I, I got a, a likeness um, which is always important but I felt like I was missing that oomph and I, I really felt that the one thing to get me to that next level was having better brushwork so I spent a good amount of time just actually researching how they went about doing their work I visited uh, a, a number of galleries, uh, in particular the Smithsonian Institute in D.C., and I got really close to some of these paintings to the point where some of the guards would tell me like I had to back up and just really try to analyze what the brush strokes looked like and try to put myself in, in their mind. Also, I went online and just Googled what the materials that these artists would use and sometimes I, f I would find little videos on YouTube uh, that people have posted of some of these artists studios and I try to um, pause the the video wherever I saw a brush and I, I really just analyzed um, as much as I could then I compared their materials and their techniques and their approach to mine and I realized that I was working in these like huge canvases and working with really small brushes, which was really counterproductive to me achieving that look that I wanted. So I essentially had to overhaul my whole paint application technique. So after identifying my specific goal, and in this situation, it's, you know, better brush strokes I focused intensely only on that goal to the point where I didn't really care if my colors were right if my values were right I just wanted to get good brush strokes and I ended up having to simplify my subject matter so I wasn't working on portraits anymore I was taking on one fruit one lemon one flower and trying to get an accurate um, portrayal of that subject with very broad brush strokes. So I, I took a large brush and I tried to make paintings with one large brush, not using any small brushes. 
and I made a lot of really bad paintings. Like I felt like I was learning how to paint all over again. Like I knew nothing about paint, but that's just the the level of dedication you have to, you know, t take on and the level of focus you have to be in. And after I started getting some works that I, I was kind of happy with, I looked for feedback. And I'm fortunate in, enough that I'm, I'm part of an artist community where I have a, at my disposal a number of artists that I really respect and I know they'll give me honest feedback, not just tell me something looks good to make me feel good. Once I felt I got to a level where I was achieving my goal in some of these su simple subject matters, I started to complicate my subjects a little bit more. So I started um, setting up some harder still lives with more individual objects. I started going out and painting landscapes. And then once I felt comfortable doing that, I moved back into portrait work. And I, I at first still felt a little weird, um, but then once I started to loosen up, that's when I started noticing the difference. And all that hard work and all those bad paintings started to, to pay off, essentially. So... For anybody that may find themselves in a situation where they feel they aren't growing anymore, I would encourage them to choose one specific goal and focus only on that goal until you're happy with it. Find a good teacher or someone that will give you good feedback. Now, that may be harder than than you may think because you, you will find a lot of people that will just try to t tell you what you want to hear or give you positive feedback um, thinking that they're they're uh, helping you or or motivating you by doing that when you find a person or a group of people that give you good critiques on your work Try to keep them around. It's going to make a huge difference in the long run. And then always switch up um, your subject matters. If you get too comfortable with your medium, change your medium up here and there. If you've been doing oil paintings, do a watercolor, do a charcoal drawing. Uh, always try to not get too comfortable. Once you start getting too comfortable, well, you, you'll start to plateau again so you always want to be challenging yourself um, I hope I hope I've done a good job in trying to explain this but there is a, a book um, that you can find called peak secrets from the new science of expertise by Anders Ericsson and Robert Poole and the book does a really good job of explaining some of the evidence or scientifically backed evidence uh, that, that concluded uh, how deliberate practice works and it gives really good examples in other fields like medicine and sports so in any case I, I hope you like this video and I hope I motivated you to um, kind of pick a goal for, for your work. So in any case, have a good one.